Hello everyone, we are Team Sugary from River Valley High School, consisting of team members Sugar and Sherry. Our team name was made by plonking both of our names together. These are the contents we will cover in our video presentation today, and we hope that you will enjoy this presentation and find it informative. First up, we'll be presenting a quick overview of our robot. This is what our final robot looks like. The electrical components have 3D printed cases that are compatible with LEGO, which makes it convenient to incorporate with our robot's chassis, which is also built out of LEGO. Here are the hardware components of our robot. We have one onboard computer, the Raspberry Pi 4, and one microcontroller, the RP2040 on our robot. The Raspberry Pi 4 acts as an onboard computer as it processes large amounts of data and also makes decisions based on the data processed. However, the Raspberry Pi 4 is not as good at processing analog commands using, used to control actuators like motors. Therefore, we use an RP2040 to send commands to the actuators on our robot. Since the RP2040 does not have the processing power to handle large amounts of data from the sensors we use, we connect it to the Raspberry Pi 4 to take commands from it. The Raspberry Pi 4 sends commands to the RP2040 through the UART communication protocol. Essentially, they are connected by their TX and RX pins. We use the Pi camera and LD19 LiDAR sensor to complete the mission. The Pi camera is mainly used to line track, and the LD19 LiDAR sensor is mainly used in the evacuation zone. We also designed a custom printed circuit board for this competition. While a custom PCB may be a good idea as we can design it to suit our robot and the mission's specific requirements, it also takes many drafts and rounds of checking to be made successfully. Our robot also has a collection, sorting, and dispensing mechanism to complete the mission. These are some of the platforms and resources we used for coding. Now, we'll go through how we made our PCB. Here are the steps needed to design a PCB. We used an online software called EasyEDA to design our PCB. This year, we decided to take a slightly different approach towards designing our PCB. Instead of just putting electrical components onto our PCB, we decided to just take their chips to place onto our PCB. This saves us a lot of space as our PCB needs to be smaller than the Raspberry Pi 4 to fit conveniently onto our robot. Next, we analyze the data sheets of the chosen components. There are crucial information such as working voltages in the data sheet. Analyzing the data sheets correctly will prevent you from designing a PCB that goes kaboom. Next, we create a schematic for our PCB. An electrical schematic is a blueprint for an electronic circuit. It uses standardized symbols to show how electrical components are connected. Here are some of the common symbols you see and use. This is what our final schematic looks like. After we have converted the schematic to PCB and wired it, this is what our final PCB looks like. Here is our PCB wired and mounted onto our robot. Now we'll be talking about our Pi camera, which is mainly used for line tracking. The Pi camera returns image data, usually in JPEG, PNG, or RAW format. The image is made up of pixels, which are encoded by different color encoding systems. We decided to use HSV values to handle most data on our robot, as they are more defined and more intuitive to handle. In code, the pixels are stored and represented by arrays. To manipulate the data, we read the data returned by the Pi camera and input it into our functions. We use the Pi camera for line tracking. To do so, we split the image sent by the Pi camera into two regions, top and bottom. The top region is used to detect for the green squares, which will determine which direction our robot will move at a junction. HSV values are used for data manipulation here. Upon detecting a green square, the camera will check for a black line in front of the green square. If there is a black line in front of the green square, our robot will execute the movements to move according to the green square. 
Otherwise, our robot disregards the green square and continues line tracking with the bottom region of the written images. We use the PD controller for our line tracking. Above, you can see the formula for how the PD controller works. For line tracking, we use the grayscale values written by the camera as it is more direct and intuitive. Based on our testing, our KP and KD values for line tracking are relatively low, with a KP value of 0.8 and a base speed of 90. Other image processing techniques, such as eroding and contouring, are also used for our Pi camera. Eroding removes the tiny anomalies from our image, such as dust specks and little light reflections. Contouring helps us find the boundaries of shapes in an image, which allows us to perform object recognition and shape analysis to detect the green squares. There are open CV functions and tutorials for this. Now, we will be talking about our LD19 LiDAR sensor, which is mainly used to rescue victims in the evacuation zone. A LiDAR sensor uses light pulses to measure distance. You may think of it as an upgraded spinning time of flight sensor. However, LiDAR sensors give inaccurate readings when it comes to clear surfaces like that. The LD19 LiDAR sensor returns point cloud data. This data consists of a set of points where each point represents a specific location in the environment surrounding the sensor. We used Pygame to display the cloud points so we can better visualize the data to further manipulate it to code our algorithm for the evacuation zone. This was done with reference to resources on OpenCV and YouTube. They are linked above. Upon entering the evacuation zone, our robot will start to scan for the nearest victim. We use the distance between outline points and best fit lines to detect the presence of victims in the evacuation zone. To determine the distance our robot is away from the victims, we use the cosine formula as shown above. This is taught in secondary tree mathematics. Thereafter, our robot will orientate itself to face the victim and slowly move towards it using proportional controller. To confirm that it was not a false detection, we also use our camera to check for the shape of a ball in the image. Once verified, our robot will pick up the victim and dispense it in the respective areas, located by the LiDAR and verified by the Pi camera. It will then go back to the middle of the evacuation zone and spin until it sees another victim. Thereafter, the whole process repeats until all the victims have been rescued. To exit the evacuation zone, our robot uses the LD19 LiDAR sensor to wall track until it senses a gap. This is done using the PD controller. Our robot then uses the Pi camera to verify whether it is an exit by checking for either black or silver on the ground. Before we end our video, we would like to extend our deepest appreciation to our coach, Mr. JK. Thank you, Mr. JK, for always being an amazing and funny coach in our robotics journey. Thank you for always being very patient with us and for having faith in us and always pushing our limits so we can achieve our best. You are not only a wonderful coach, but also a big inspiration and role model to us. We will continue to work hard to do you more proud in the future. Cheers from Team Sugary. With that, we will end off our presentation. Thank you. For any more updates, you may visit our Instagram page at Sugary.